Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the third game of the Mav War Tournament 2016, right here on x Stream. I am Rails Barlow, one of your admins and one of your casters for this evening's matchup between the Overlords and the Warriors of Darkness. We are about to go live right here with this match on Parish. Co-casting with me tonight is the one and only Mr. Prodigy Sim. How are you tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty well, just finished up casting a match for a different tournament, but um, I'm excited to see this one. It looks like it's going to be a good one for us. Indeed, and in the interest of time, since it was my one account which was ha having a lot of issues from the server, we are sitting here in server with both teams right up, so we are going to do a typical introduction in terms of stories and that stuff at the next ready up period. Right now we are going to be going live with this game, Warriors of Darkness on the Survivor, Overlords on the Special Infected, and for the first hit for the Overlords we have a Hunter, Spitter, Jockey, and a Charger. Let's see what happens as the Survivors make their way out of the safe from right here. Again, Charger coming from the side, landing on an Ellis, and we have the Hunter going in trying to land as well. That Charger is not yet being served with a stick going down on top of that and piece him. That's an absolutely crazy hit from the Overlords on that first attack. Yeah, that is a huge amount of damage. Great charge spit right there. And the SI, the other SI managing to keep the survivors from getting that clear in any sort of a timely manner. There goes the Witch Crown though, Master Silver. Gonna be grabbing that before the SI have any chance to react. And as you mentioned, that is Mr. Silver for the Warriors of Darkness. This gives us a good time to do a quick roster rundown. So, for the Warriors of Darkness on the survivor side, it's Cool Awesome Go, Master Silver, Craze, and Stoned. And who do we have for the Overlords, Mr. p -Sim? We've got Trice, Lucifer, Lotus, and Go Smoke More, actually. And next hit is coming in right now. There goes the Jockey in the front. Hunter looking for the intercept, not able to find it, but the pull does land for a little bit of damage. There finally goes the Pounce, and Tank actually gets spawned up in the middle of that, going to the hands of Lotus for Team Overlords. Indeed it is. Looks as though our survivors are going to take this back towards the safe room area. There is still a smoker up for the special infected. Tank is going to be making his way over here, trying to transition. Probably going to decide to either kill off that smoker, or if the smoker can get a pull to that car, they could try to hit the intercept. The next hit should be coming up in a couple seconds here, and they'll have to decide whether or not they want to send this in piece in before this tank makes his transition. That Hunter is getting ready. It looks like they could definitely go for either one. They have a pretty solid track out. There goes the pull out in the front onto Silver. That's going to let the tank get a little bit of a rotation. SI just getting a little bit of chip mid damage right there. And the tank manages to get the cross with only about 300 chip. There goes Silver. They're looking for this early chip on the tank, and I think they're going to get it. He knocked that car actually all the way clean over into the safe room-ish area there, so that's why it's not in the middle of the street. Now the tank is on second pass. How about we quickly send this over to an Overlord Special Infected Worm and see how they do as they commit this tank. Okay, let's, um, um let's get, let's try and get that boomer off. Oh, uh, now we should wait for his commit because he's on second. Okay. Commit when you're ready. I'll back you up. Yeah, on second pass, we're just going on over. You just go in. No chip. Go in? Yeah, go in. No, yeah, go in. Yeah, go in. Go in. Let's help him now. Nice jockey. There's a person behind you. I'm clear. That person is Sink. Good damage. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, from that initial war room of the Overlord. That tank in the hands of Lotus doing a pretty good amount of damage. We saw a double boom, Jockey land, Charter got some separation as well with those punches, and then the tank was able to land a couple hits. What do you think of that piece, then? I think that was that was definitely the right call to make by Warriors of Darkness. Great rotation right there, but a great job with the SI on the Overlords as well. That Charger actually getting a little bit Charlie Brown by that tank rock landing on Coach at the start. Which is pretty funny to see, but. Uh, overall, I'd say this is a good amount of damage for that tank on this map, uh, even considering the uh, rotation that Warriors of Darkness got. Now we're just baiting out this next show. There goes the pull to the front. Charge actually going to get a double from the back spitter. Barely able to make it in time, but manages to get the spit on both of those survivors. Wow, Godframe's doing some work right there, but that was a ton of damage. That was about 130 bonus taken off 
or even more than that actually, like more like 140 taken off from the survivor team. Yeah, and that's a lot of damage. As you mentioned, that tank was able to push out a pretty good amount of work, but obviously on that first hit when one survivor almost took it down from the initial charge spit, now that double charge with the then resulting double cap there, that's even more health flowing off the survivors. And now for Promod, I think their smoke is going to be a little bit low for this map. They are going to shoot the alarm car, I'm pretty sure, trying to kill that smoker. Now the Jockey Boomer Hunter are going to be able to support on this a little bit. Smoker does get a pull in the front. Jockey going for the intercept right here. After that double boom land, Hunter's looking to find the land in the back. Does the M2 shut down, but the Jockey does manage to land for a split second as the in cap does go out onto a silver in the front. Now they have almost no bonus left. The reason I mentioned that the pro mod scoring obviously is due to the fact that there was a small nerf to the distance, but you can score a lot of points in this map depending on how you take that tank. But right now, the Warriors of Darkness are actually in danger of wiping if they aren't able to get these survivors up before the next set of spawns comes in. That's two in caps actually going out onto them as the next spawns are coming up. Spitter going in, trying to do the best they can to delay right there. Good amount of spit damage going on to the survivors and keep them. This is a dire situation. Yeah, it really is. They're still horde. Looks like they're about to finish the horde from the alarm car, but next SI coming in, Charger managing to get a punch, gonna pop that boomer, there's the charge right now, not getting an end cap though, and the jockey was actually taken care of on the front side as well. Hunter getting skeeted helped the survivor's case a little bit, but they're gonna have almost no bonus if they're able to pick each other back up, but the horde keeps coming in now from that resulting tri boom and two survivors are on the ground, almost right on top of each other. Smoker coming down from the top right there, imagine to land on the cool. That's gonna be, I think it's gonna be the wipe, if I'm not mistaken. They are not gonna get that clear, and that's the Warriors of Darkness being wiped by the Overlords on that first half round there. Wow, Pete, they didn't even get 400 points, unfortunately, for them. Yeah, wow, that was really great infected all through the map by Team Overlords. I was going to say, the name of the game was, like, Charge Spits. They got Charge Spits on at least two or three attacks uh, during that map, but then with that final hit, it was just, you know, capitalization, hitting those timings, hitting those end caps, getting the alarm car over and over again. So, uh, great job from Team Overlords. Speaking of the Overlords, I think now is... Uh pretty acceptable time to mention their backstories as we wait for Mr. x to rejoin the server. So, do you have the stories with you, P-Sim? The stories? I don't stories? know about stories so much. Uh, this this is a game from the uh, villains bracket Indeed. of the tournament. So, these are both these are both bad guys. And I guess we're going to find out which team is the badder set of bad guys at this point. Um, DVR. I, I... And I, will I think say that I have the stories with me, so... Oh, there's stories. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, if please. I can... Here, before x raise up, we'll only force them to sit through me reading one of these, just to be, you know, nice, I guess. But let's see. Okay, so, for the overlords, let's as it that hell has been taken over. The devil, now just a puppet controlled by the evil wrath of the four members of the overlords. It is said that the overlords were once a group of four young men who were backstabbed by their lovers over an elaborate dare which spanned several years. Trice, Lucifer, Smoke, and Lotus were dating the girls from the daredevils for several years. They would go everywhere together and were always inseparable, often adventuring to the Whispering Oaks amusement park to ride a few coasters and win prizes at the peanut gallery. Trice's amazing accuracy even won a and X we even won XO a Noam Tomsky grand prize once. Little did they know that these four young men would soon realize an ultimate backstab by the Daredevil girls over an elaborate dare set up by the Unfudging Believables. You see, the Unfudging Believables were in fact the true lovers of the Daredevil girls. They had orchestrated an elaborate dare. The dare was to pretend to like and the overlords. The Daredevils were addicted to playing truth or dare. Of course they obliged. It was about three years into the dare before the truth came out, when all four of the Daredevil girls deliberately and simultaneously incapped all four of the young men using auto friendly fire the boys were heartbroken dead but most of all angry upon their deaths the boys were sent to hell since they lived a horrible life anyway. There, the devil offered an idea to seek revenge on the daredevils. However, the boys were still fuming with anger and ultimately killed the devil and took over hell. Now, hell has a new agenda. The daredevils must die. So, too, the good in the world, or so the legend goes. And with that, how about we take it live to the second half of the first round here. Peace, Sam, I love it. I love the epic saga. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's more lore than I think this entire game has on its own, and I was... <laughs> I was enjoying it quite well. Um, so yeah, wow, these guys have quite a lot going for them. There's a nice jockey skeet right now. Hunter gonna land in the front. Charger just gets the stumble. Nice clears by the Overlords right now. I think that, you know, their backstory is giving them the fire they need to uh, push through this opening hit. That's the exact opposite of what we saw come out on that first hit from the Overlords. They were on SI. Nice crown going out by Lucifer right there. Obviously, they did not eat that charge spit. They were able to keep their bonus intact, obviously, up until this point. They're actually pushing pretty hard, clearing out these common. They might be able to get that tank spawned. 
pretty quickly, but let's see if they're able to withstand this next hit. Spitter, Jockey, Smoker, Hunter coming in right now. Jockey from the front, landing on a coach successfully in the back, and then that Hunter is going to get skied as Lucifer gets pulled by that Smoker. Actually, never mind, the Hunter didn't get skied, landing on the neck, what am I talking about? So, that's the about 40 damage coming out, and now the tank is going to be up into the hands of Cool Awesome Go for the Warriors of Darkness. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I think that was a Jackie Skeet you were catching instead of a 101. Yeah. Uh, Survivor's going to move back to the safer area right here. And probably going to wait out for uh, this next hit to come in. I doubt we'll see the car go over from the Warriors of Darkness quite like we saw in the uh, first half. But um, why don't we go ahead and take it over to that infected war room, Warriors of Darkness. Let's do it. He's playing. Cool. He's the window. All right. Just takes a sight. Let's get it, guys. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Get across. Get the boom, yeah. Nice I got one. It's hard, it's a boom. I'm gonna lose my first pass. That's right, why you can press over. Follow the press over. Yeah, they're not looking. Chip. Alright, you're ready to go on next hit. Okay. Don't tunnel the zoom. Make sure you can always see what's around you. Ready? Ready. Yeah, you can go in. Go, go, go. Got one. Uh -oh. Get that one. Behind you. Oh, never mind. Yeah, nice. I'll hold on to these pills. All right, welcome back, everyone. And that was Cool Awesome Goes Tank for the Warriors of Darkness. Actually, getting a great amount of punches in that area, managing to even get a double punch onto Coach and Nick in the middle of that. But Overlords do walk out of it, and I'd have to say, overall, that looks pretty similar to what we saw in the uh, first round. What do you think, Rails? Yeah, the real difference was that I didn't eat that charge spit in the first hit, and so far have not been able to, like, make it through the alley. But I think the big difference on that, too, is that when you saw that jockey separation, that could have been a huge potential right there. There's a survivor low on the front, M2 in that hunter. Charger is going to get a single punch right there, a little bit more spit damage going out. But again, as they make their way through the alley, that's much less damage. Obviously, no multi-charge, no multi-cap there. That tank, he did go in, and as you said, he got a good amount of punches on his own, but his support didn't do a whole lot for him. That boomer was popped, and they managed to shut down the other two SI really without a whole lot of incident. So, that being said, the Overlord should be able to push their way to the safe room, actually, right now, before this next hit is fully up. There should be a couple stragglers coming in, but they should take a pretty nice lead. Smoker is going to get a pull on the Tricer right there, and is going to get clear before it hits the car. Survivors do hit the car, but they do get in, and that's going to put the Overlord in the lead by a score of 8. 100 to 389. This is what I mentioned by the pro mod spring. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that was definitely a nice tank. I have, to, I have to say, Overlords looked like they had a little bit more sort of Rambo positioning. Like, after that that previous choke point going through the alley, they were just ready to move immediately after. Had somebody all the way in the front already. And, uh, you know, the positioning caught them out on tank a little bit as well. But, you know, they managed to work it through with their uh, positioning and movement. 800 points. It's a great map one to have on the Parish. Right, and now the question is, where is this next tank going to spawn? It's actually going to be pretty early. Actually, can I read? Yeah, I can read. That's 11%. So that's Indeed. not bad, actually. That's going to be an interesting fight here to see what the Warriors of Darkness do, because they are playing a little bit behind x as well, giving out a little bit of... Sh we're sharing sentiments on that, because Peace and that's, that's probably the earliest tank spawn I've seen on this map. Yeah, that is. And is this car... I don't... I mean, this car's hittable not on most configs, so I think it's probably not hittable on this one either. Uh, I'm sure we'll... yeah, not in pro mod either. So, this should be... I mean, this is this can be a fairly safe take, tank to take. There's some different positionings you can do. Um, you can try to push a little bit, but we'll have to see. Overlords on Survivor first, we'll see how they decide to take this out. Let's see, the first hit for the Warriors of Darkness is going to be a Spitter, Jockey, Hunter, and a Boomer, so a 2-2, somewhat effective in this area, though, if they manage to get things to land, but instead, the Spitter's actually going to go in right here, and I think they realize that with that tank percentage, they really don't want the Overlords to push out into that open area to the right. It says Survivor Progress is at, like, 1% right now on the spec HUD, but once they come out, that tank should be almost instant, or not at all. So, let's see 
when that tank actually decides to spawn. If they land like a double boom here, they could even commit the tank depending on what happens. But I think the Overlord's gonna be really careful because they know the infected like have the advantage here in the positioning. Yeah, definitely so. Here comes the charge though from the back. Getting a punch, whiff right there though. Hunter gonna come in. Gets M2 down and shut down right there, and it looks like this Boomer Jockey still not finding anything quite to do with their spawns yet, but the tank is now coming up. Survivor's opting to actually push off that with one, two spawns still up. There comes a rock, and Overlord's actually managed to push through. No boom gonna land, even though they just tried for it. So, wow, now it's Silver playing a very standard map 2 park area tank. I really don't. I have to say, I really do not agree with the call from the SI right there. After they sent that, like, Charger and Hunter, and I think they should just save the entire hit, because I checked my current in-game instead of looking at the spec cut, and it was like 12% by the time they were standing right outside the safe room. So theoretically, that probably should have spawned, and that would have changed the fight drastically. Jockey going in, not going to be able to land much of anything. Charger missing the charge. Tanks going to throw another rock, and as you mentioned, Pisa, now this is standard. Like, they've lost that opportunity to keep the survivors in a bad area, and this boomer still could not find a despawn until now. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I have to wonder if the infected team were maybe thinking the tank should have spawned a little bit earlier and weren't quite sure what to do with their uh, hit after that, but Overlord's definitely in a dominant position right now. Nice one boom being found by Kreeze right there. Tank is already on second pass, 50%. He's going to have to commit. Let's quickly send over to that Warriors of Darkness worm as he makes his way in. Tom, why are you going in? Why did you just go in? I didn't say go in. No, I'm going in. Ready for help? Yeah, go. I give up. Can I like resign, please? Reload. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, from that short Overlords of Darkness worm. Silver getting a couple punches in that open area off that one boom, but that hunter got, got skeeted right away. And unfortunately for any tank in that situation, like, that's not the optimal area that you'd want to try to get a lot of damage in peace. It's so open, the survivors can cut you everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I'd have to say that's that's a pretty fair performance by a tank in that area to get, uh, you know, he got like two rocks and two punches, Reload. I think. Um... Either way, a pretty solid amount of damage, but Overlord's not phased by that, and they found an extra set of pills, and they're going to keep moving, so... I imagine we'll see something similar from the second half, but we'll have to see. There's a lot of map left. They do have just a 2-2 setup right now with this Hunter and Jockey. Not great to play on this alley, but it looks like they really want to. Jockey, looking for that spawn in the back. But don't man, have a really good don't... hit right now. Like, yeah, they, they don't want to go and see. They have to make the decision. Like, do they want to hit now or do they want to try to save what they've got for the next choke? Grimmer's going to try to go and does manage to land a single. Jockey coming in from the front, getting dead stopped by Rochelle. Hunter does we land on to Ellis in the back and then top that for not even two ticks of damage. But now the problem is that they might risk losing what they want for that corner. Yeah, that was a nice boom to open the hit, but wow, with that hit just taking as long as it did to go in. It's a little bit risky. Here's the was Witch up front. Lucifer was the one boomed. Gonna be going for that. Gets the crown nice and easy. And uh, spawns are now coming up, so Warriors of Darkness should be able to set up in time for this next choke, although it's not quite clear if they'll have the hit set up they're looking for. That pause coming out by Silver right there. He's, <laughs> he's gonna for- wait, what? Yeah, Is he really? You guys win. Let's see. Expert didn't show up. Actually, this actually might be serious. Oh my god, we have a... Woo! Please wait as we need to resolve an issue. Hmm, alright, well... We'll be back right after this commercial message. And... Oh no. And it will just be a stomp. You have X on your team. Did he you know that? expert on his team. I was going to say, this team is very similar to the TFPG lineup uh, yeah, yeah. Silver was running in the last tournament. I believe Cool Awesome Go and Stone D and Expert were all on the same team during the TFPG tournament, and they did pretty well there. Sure. Yep. I'm kind of surprised to hear him say that he thinks this will just be a stomp. Like, they just... I don't know. Maybe it will be. But uh, I don't even... I'm not even familiar with that many of the players on this uh, sort of Overlord's team. Lotus and Ghost Smokemore? I mean, I'm guessing Ghost Smokemore is probably a alias of some sort, but... Either way, they've definitely been having good performance.
they, I believe, I know Ghost Smoke More was part of a, I think it was NCI, and they placed second in Mavwords last tournament last year, and I've seen Lotus kind of just pugging around a little bit, not sure exactly how much team experience that he has, but I know he's been playing competitive just for a little bit. I know, as you mentioned, Cool, Stoned, and Master Silver were all on the same team for the TFEG tournament that just happened. And then Craze, I think, is relatively new. But the thing is, they're missing Expert, and Expert would be the person who would be there. Obviously, for his history with Silver, both of them played on the console together, as Lucifer did as well. But it's still in a situation like this, you don't want to see it where it comes down to because one player didn't show up. Like, that's going to be yeah. a huge imbalance in the teams. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, that would be really unfortunate to see because still, I mean, yeah, it's a tournament where everyone's competing and that kind of stuff. But at the same point in time, the... The fight's still gotta be there. Like, like I mean, that—that's the thing where it's like, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I feel like I feel like Stone D and Cool Awesome Go have shown a lot of improvement and could make this a close game. But I mean, Lucifer and Trice is a pretty strong combo already. Uh, not even knowing the skills of the other players on that team. Right, and, and of I course, the... from a from a lore perspective, I don't know. <laughs> the Overlords are apparently like they've taken over <laughs> Hell. They're the yeah, Overlords of Hell. Dude. And I, I guess we haven't heard Warriors of Darkness's uh, backstory yet, but I mean, it just seems like that's that's a pretty solid like commanding position to be the overlords of Hell as compared to <laughs> Warriors of Darkness of some sort. But yeah, I don't know. Do we actually have lore from? Oh, oh, oh they're GG. GGs. They're G the GGs are there going up. The GG. Fourth. I was about to read their story too. Well then, this has been. The third game of the Mav War tournament. Uh, it's been nice to bring you the chapter and a half that we had. I used one of my like, I don't know. I was, I was ready to see at least most of this happen, but unfortunately, like, I, I I'm trying to remember the last time that a game was forfeited mid mid game like that. That's really unfortunate. Challenge accepted. So PSM has taken it upon himself to play as the sole. Special infected, so this is going to be actually be a continuation of the match for a while. That's that's just got the Overlord free taking the win right there. <laughs> Pizim's doing work at this point, so yeah. yeah, I guess I would need Warriors of Darkness's story if they were still in the server, but they're not in the server for anyone wondering. So yeah, we'll that was save it the... for when they're going to give a little yeah. better showing. Exactly. So it's actually, it's actually better that I didn't read their story because it, it didn't. Oh, I see Pizim going for this pounce as well too. <laughs> I almost, I almost had it. Almost had it. He's going for it still, but. So yeah, thank you everybody for tuning into this chapter and a half game of Left 4 Dead 2. And I got a six it's... damage pounce. Six damage pounce. All right, that's that's a start right there. Usually, climbing the ceiling helps a little bit more. So yeah, we will see Team Overlords making their way to 1-0 in the tournament, as long as this doesn't change. And anyone else interested, please go over to MavWar.com. You can vote for your MVP for this you know, match and a half right now, but I'm sure there's going to be an interesting conversation among the admins coming out about this. But unfortunate piece of them that it had to end this way. Yeah, it definitely was unfortunate. I thought I was hoping for a good close game. Definitely was interested to see more Overlord's performance, and always interested to see how Silver and, and uh, Stone D, Cool Awesome, those guys, uh, do they play together? Hopefully but yeah, next thanks time for having us. Their, uh, they'll have their starting lineup out, so we can actually see that full like chemistry come together. Not sure, but yeah, as Peaceman just said, thank you for having us. Thank you everybody for watching. Admins for doing what they do. X by for attempting to stream this, and we will catch you guys. Let's see, Peaceman, do you know where the next game is? Uh, no idea. I think there is one later this week, but I don't know. I've also been informed that we should point out that Trice has just won two tournament matches in separate tournaments within four hours of each other. So, wow, that's got to be some kind of a record. Not bad, not bad. And I actually do have the information for the next game. I just pulled up on Mavwar.com. That's going to be Game 4, coming to you Sunday, May 15th, 2016, obviously, at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, between two hero teams, the, da the Daredevils and the K9 Fighters. So, obviously, the women who scorned the, <laughs> who scorned the Overlords here are going to have their chance at the Mavwar crown via their group, and maybe the Daredevils and Overlords meet in the Grand Finals, we really don't know, but anybody interested in that game, it will be casted right here on x channel as well. And, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we have, so any final words, Pison? Uh, Garble de Gook. I agree. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Have a great night.